What is up everybody and welcome to my sauna. It is so hot and so humid where I live today and the only place in my house that doesn't have air conditioning is where I sit right now. But what we are doing is we are going back and having a look at what was being printed in the press at the time of Stephen Avery and Brendan Dassey's arrest and what was being printed at the time their trial was going on. In the first article from today, we are going back to February 13th, 2007 and it's from the Madison Capital Times. The headline states, Witness says woman went to Avery's six times. A 25-year-old photographer made her sixth visit to Stephen Avery's auto salvage yard to photograph a vehicle for sale just before she disappeared and died. Her supervisor testified today. Stephen Avery, 44, is accused of killing Teresa Halbach and burning her body on Halloween in 2005. He had been released from prison two years earlier after serving 18 years for a crime he didn't commit. Halbach of Calumet County had her own photography studio in Green Bay and worked for Auto Trader magazine. She went to the salvage yard on October 31st, 2005 to photograph a minivan that Avery's family member wanted to sell through the magazine. In Operations supervisor at the magazine at the time of Halbach's death testified today that Halbach went to the Avery property six times from June 2005 to Halloween to take pictures of cars, a trailer, and a sports utility vehicle. She also stated that she talked to Halbach by phone around 11 a.m. the day she died to tell her the appointment at Avery's property. She also stated that the magazine gave Hulbach a cannon-powered A310 camera, pieces of which were found burned in the barrel on Stephen Avery's property. Her testimony was part of what Special Prosecutor Ken Kratz called pieces of a puzzle that, when put together, would prove Avery killed the photographer. And Kratz also promised jurors they would hear telephone messages from Hulbach confirming the appointment. Avery's defense attorney, Dean Strang, said during his opening arguments that deputies were so sure that Avery killed Teresa Hulbach, they planted evidence and once again arrested him for a crime he didn't commit. Strang said Monday during opening statements that Avery saw Hulbach leave his property. She could have gone off to a hustle shot in which she drummed up business on her own. The person from the magazine testified today that the magazine had no records of Teresa Halbach doing that, but she still couldn't rule that out. The bottom line is, from your records, you don't know and cannot tell this jury whether or not Teresa Halbach left Stephen Avery's property on October 31st and went somewhere else to do a hustle shot. Isn't that right? Jerome Buting asked. That's correct. Avery's defense claims Manitowoc County Sheriff's deputies James Lank or Andrew Colburn removed blood from an unsecured vial and planted it in other evidence on the property. Avery had claimed in his civil suit that the deputies ignored evidence that would have freed him in the rape case that in prolonging his incarceration. It's it's a good law enforcement officer's worst nightmare to convict an innocent person, Strang said, so he continued it was normal for deputies to feel the same embarrassment and anger that led them to plant the evidence. Kratz detailed other evidence during his opening statement, saying Hallbox sports utility vehicle was found near the crusher in the Avery salvage yard, and Avery had a deep cut on his finger that left blood in six places on Teresa, in Teresa Hallbach's vehicle. Among the points he raised, Hallbach's bone fragments were found not only in Avery's burn pit, but in a nearby burn barrel and in a quarry. It wasn't until the seventh search, seventh search of Stephen Avery's trailer that Lank found the key to Hallbach's SUV. Next to the nightstand, there were no fingerprints on it, just Avery's DNA. So yeah, just, you know, just more things with no fingerprints, but, you know, blood of Stephen Avery's on it, DNA of Stephen Avery's on it. The search warrant was used multiple times when, according to Jerry Buting, the search warrant that was issued should have only been once, and if they wanted to research the property, that they should have got additional search warrants. The next article is from February 15th, 2007, and it is from the Madison Capital Times. It states, Avery Kin thought request was joke. Nephew was asked to dispose of body. The day, that he, the day after he testified that his uncle asked him to dispose of a body, the nephew of a man charged in the photographer's death put his comments in context by saying the conversation was clearly a joke. Bobby Dassey, who is the older brother of Brendan Dassey, told the jury Wednesday that Stephen Avery asked him and a friend, Mike, 
for help disposing of a body on November 3rd, 2005, the same day the photographer Teresa Halbach was reported missing. He asked us if it sounded like he asked us if it sounded like he was joking. He asked us if we wanted he wanted us to help get rid of the body. Under cross-examination today, Dassey said the exchange happened after Halbach was reported missing. The, he only caught the last part of the conversation between Avery and Mike, and it was clear to him that it was a joke. Stephen Avery followed up by saying something like, People go missing all the time, and this girl might have left for Mexico, Dean Strang said. Yes, Dassey said. Avery, 44, is accused of killing Teresa Halbach on October 31st, 2005. Dassey's testimony Wednesday had prompted Avery's attorneys to ask for a mistrial. After jurors left the courtroom, Dean Strang told Circuit Court Judge Patrick Willis that he hadn't heard Dassey talk about disposing of a body, and his testimony contradicted Mike's statements to police that the conversation occurred at a later date. Willis denied the mistrial, agreeing with Special Prosecutor Ken Kratz that the defense had 15 months to interview Dassey. He sent the jury home early so defense attorneys could interview Dassey. Dassey, 20, who lives with his mother next to Stephen Avery, testified Wednesday that he saw Halbach drive up to the family's salvage yard the afternoon of October 31st to take pictures of a red minivan his mother was selling. He said Halbach walk he said he saw Halbach walk toward his uncle's trailer as he left to go hunting about 15 minutes later. He said he didn't see her or her vehicle when he returned three hours later. And the last article we are going to go over today is from the Madison Capital Times from February 16th, 2007. Blood in Halbach's vehicle found by dog witnesses. A Belgian Shepherd alerted deputies to blood in a sports utility vehicle found at Avery's Auto Salvage Yard two days after the owner was reported missing, the dog's handler testified today. The dog handler, who is a member of Great Lakes Search and Rescue, testified today that she and the dog named Brutus were called to Auto Avery Salvage on November 5th after Hallbach's cousin found her Toyota RAV4 among 4,000 other cars in the lot. She stated that she and Brutus searched around the salvage yard car crusher but came up empty when Brutus searched around the Toyota. He barked and signaled that he found human remains. He went to this vehicle very quickly, came back to me and gave his trained indication. I asked him to show me again and he went back to the same car. Kramer said that Brutus barked and put his paw on the side of the vehicle on his return trip to the RAV4 but did not enter the vehicle. It told me Brutus smelled blood or some other type of human remains at that vehicle. Alright, so those are the articles we are going to go over here today. Let me know what you think. What do you think of what was going on in the case at this particular time? Leave some comments below. I hope you're having a good day and I will see you again soon.